in my last video, I talked about why so much content marketing in this world is noise. You know, the type of stuff that makes people say, we do not need any more content. Amen to that. But I also said that we do need more great content. And I defined that type of content as great content listens, it interacts, it's ongoing, it evolves with your audience. It has a purpose that goes beyond marketing to make a sale. It helps, it relates, it leaves a lasting impression and it connects. So today I'm going to talk about this type of content, why it works, give some examples and talk about why it's important even beyond the marketing part that we continue to do this. My name is Tara and this is Truly Social. If you are ready to figure out what really great content looks like, I can walk you through our process. Let's get on with it. It requires number one, understanding your audience and number two, understanding your goals. That's it. Simple, right? Now, you'd think that every company in the world understands their customers, especially in the social era where there are endless ways to listen and get to know your customers. Now, you would expect that, but time and time again, I find that they don't. Some brands understand the numbers and perhaps even some demographics as they relate to their customers. They may even have some personas they've created. Oh, persona is based on an in-depth analysis. But as far as deeply understanding them, their hopes, dreams, motivations, fears, goals, interests, questions, frustrations, who they are as whole people, not really. Now, when you're really ready to dive in and really ready to commit to this, here are some of the dimensions of the whole customer that we tend to look at. So their attitudes and behaviors. Are they fiscally conservative, status-driven? How about what do they consider must-haves versus nice-to-haves? What are their goals and how can we we help them get there. What is their level of understanding around the industry? Will we lose them with jargon or do we need to pull out the insider language and really connect? What's their life stage? Are they just starting out? Starting a family? Do they have an eye to retirement? Do they have a special language they use? Do they use acronyms, slang, idioms that are unique to their culture, to their industry? Who or what influences them? Do they gather with others like them in a community? If so, where? If not, do you think they're looking for this? Is this an opportunity? Now, even if you don't think that something I just listed is very relevant to your brand, and believe me it is, it's worth exploring. If multiple customers share a trait or affinity, there's likely a reason why. That's an insight. <laughs> And as you dive into dimensions of who your audience is, you will uncover patterns and anomalies that become insights that will help you find points of connection to them, which become content. Oh, we had like this connection, you know? Now you also need to understand your own goals. And once again, I'm always surprised that we have clients that come to us who do not have specific goals in mind. So ask yourself, why content? What should it do for you? Are you setting the right expectations? Now, I spoke in the last video about content being really great for things like building trust and credibility, loyalty, and helping to inform and educate in a way that doesn't feel like a lecture. If you know that your goals are that, it's much easier to shape your content towards achieving that goal. So if your goal is to educate and build trust, for instance, and your audience is novice and fiscally conservative, but you need to get them to take a few more risks in order for them to reach their goals, you should offer simpler explanations with lots of emotional reassurance, maybe some entertainment. You want to help them feel informed but secure. I feel completely reassured. So now then, you understand your audience. Now when it comes to creating the content for them, we can start to apply the following principles, which I call the three horsemen of shareable content. So number one is helpful content. Teaches something that your audience needs to learn. Number two is relatable content. Content that connects deeply with their unique identity. And number three is emotional content. This is content that inspires, entertains, touches, and or makes your audience laugh. If you understand your audience, you'll also understand how to engage through these three horsemen. Experts will want relatable and helpful. They want to learn more, but will likely shy away from overly emotional plays. You can be relatable through insider references and language. Beginners will require more emotional support while relating empathetically. They may be nervous and feel shame for their lack of knowledge. Don't overwhelm them with helpful content. Your charisma is overwhelming me. Here are two examples 
examples of the same industry where the audiences are very different in how this plays out. So meet Nancy Graham of No Dumb Questions and Ben Felix of Common Sense Investing. Nancy's audience is super smart business people, but they're not really experts in investing. Nancy tackles her topics with some humor and a lot of personal anecdotes and metaphors. To make it even more personable, we tend to use fun, light animations to help bring the often complex lessons to life. Her topics are more focused on single questions and even then, she tends to break them down into smaller bite-sized lessons. She tackled one question on the cost of investing over three videos, direct costs, indirect costs, and what am I even getting for these costs? Now she receives dozens of personal notes thanking her for the great answers that finally made something super confusing into something understood. Contrast that to Ben's common sense investing, aimed at people who like to play the market already. DIY investors, if you will. Now Ben is a data guy. He's read everything and frequently quotes experts in his industries and studies to back up his thesis. A non-expert watching his videos, like me, might even think he's speaking a different language altogether, but his audience? Wow, they love it and they write these long, thought out comments that challenge his data with their own. He's even spun off into a podcast where he can go deeper into the industry speak. Both Nancy and Ben talk about investing, but their audiences and approach are drastically different. As far as the results go, both of their series help them achieve their goals, deepening trust and loyalty, driving more referrals, and ultimately growing their books. And by the way, they don't need to have millions of subscribers or leads, they need to have an ongoing solid number of qualified leads and see that number grow over time. So is what they're doing noise? No, not at all. They get a steady stream of grateful feedback from people thanking them for their content all the time. See how important this is? Now beyond this and the benefit to the audience, the rise in branded content done well is also doing something else good in the world. It's paying writers and artists and it's paying them pretty well. Companies like Contently, Newscred, and even agencies like ours, Truly Social, are hiring journalists and illustrators and other people who have struggled to find work as media companies are being squeezed in recent years. I send tens of thousands of dollars towards invoices for freelancers out every month. And we're small potatoes. Now, I'm not saying that branded content should replace the media. Not at all. The need for media is stronger than ever. But branded content is a great emerging opportunity to augment the income for these industries. Super. Fabulous. Isn't it nice? And I think that is very awesome. Now, all of this is to say, no, we do not need more crappy same same content. We do not need the curators and retweeters and listicle farms pumping out cheap content strategies for brands. That is noise and it's bad and needs to end. But we do need great content and companies and brands can and do play a role in making sure that this happens. If you agree with me, great. If not, let me know in the comments below. My name is Tara and this has been Truly Social.